got to say, oh, yeah. this, um, this whole transparency thing with the president is crumbling, isn't it? Because, first of all, we had... Well, in fact, let's just go back two weeks. The whole Guantanamo Bay issue uh, rumbles, rumbles on. A place he said he shut down, but he didn't. Then we have Benghazi, where we have apparently 12 corrections in terms of talking points. Then we have the IRS targeting tea parties and people who use the word patriot or say they want to uh, improve their country. And now we have this. We have the Justice Department targeting AP, the Associated Press. What do you make of all this? How transparent is this? Because it seems to me to be pretty non-transparent. Look, I don't think the one we learned about today is so much a matter of transparency as a violation or at least a danger uh, to the First Amendment, to the notion of civil liberties and the like. Some of the others, though, obviously do raise serious questions of uh, candor uh, with the American public. There, there's just no denying it. In terms of a specific issue of the breaking story tonight involving the Associated Press, yeah. have they broken the law, the Justice Department, by doing this? Uh, it's possible. I doubt it, though. You know, the Department of Justice has internal regulations which, uh, which govern their behavior. And as a general proposition, before they go after phone records or confidential sources, they're supposed to negotiate, supposed to talk to the journalist or the journalist bosses. Here they didn't. Now, there is an exception in this rule here if by, by even communicating to them, it would interfere with the integrity of the investigation. But it sure is hard to believe that an investigation, which was really pretty well known around Washington and certainly to the AP, could have been so frustrated by simply giving them a chance to go to court. I mean, that's the, one of the real problems here. If you don't tell them in advance, if you don't tell the journalist, if you don't tell the AP, they have no recourse. They can't go to court and ask a judge to protect them because the secret is gone. Yeah, I, I think it's completely outrageous. Never, I mean, never mind First Amendment rights, which are obviously extremely important in this particular case, but also the whole issue of protecting sources. And let's yeah. remind everyone that, that when they were asked to hold the story, which involved this foiled terror plot, they did do that. So they behaved very responsibly. Uh, and, very, and, very. And, and, and they've been rewarded for this responsible yeah. journalism yeah. by being kicked in the teeth, it seems to me. Yeah. No, look, that's, I, I think that's absolutely right. Now, from Justice's point of view, they don't care about that. They want to get their guy. They want to get the person who did the leaking. But in the course of that, look what they're doing. What, 20 different telephones over two months from the Associated Press, all those calls recorded, that is to say, who spoke to whom via telephone number, all that is now in the hands of the Department of Justice. I mean, that's, that's not America at its best.